1818, Ludwig van Beethoven caused a sensation in the music world. He wrote an article praising the previously unknown invention by his friend Johann Nepomuk Melzel, the metronome. Since then, life in music without a metronome has become hard to imagine. The metronome is basically the click track tool that is embedded in the recording software. There is a musical grid, so to speak. There are certain time signatures, a certain tempo. If I clicked start or record, I'd hear this, for example. Würde ich zum Beispiel das hier hören. Beautiful. Apart from the fact that it delivers a very stable tempo, a click track also works as a synchronous reference. Many pop and rock music productions are done as multi-track recordings. Each instrument in a song is recorded one at a time. For example, drums are often recorded first, and then a week later a guitarist plays along, and then in another studio a singer sings his lines. These separate tracks are held together by this click reference. Beethoven published metronome markings for his symphonies in a Leipzig music journal. He left nothing to chance. Before that, composers had used Italian tempo markings from largo, slow, to presto, fast. But they were approximate markings. Thanks to metronome markings, every conductor knows the precise tempo Beethoven wanted for his symphonies. Pavo, why do you think it was so important to Beethoven to promote this new idea, the metronome? It's like evolution, you know, like a fish coming out of the water and realizing we need feet, you know, and then they grow feet and, and then they start walking. And so, so um, I think that probably that has something to do with it because all of a sudden the control goes from the hand of a composer into the hand of a stranger who has nothing to do with the creation of the piece. And this whole recreative process, the interpreting process was born. Pavo Yervi is one of the world's top conductors, and he is a great fan of Beethoven's metronome markings. He published the metronome markings probably because he wanted to make sure that people are in the right area of tempi. And of course, um, so much controversy um, uh, is to this day around these, these metronome markings. And, and the, the, the main problem really is that they are very fast. A lot of them are much faster than the traditional Beethoven interpretation that we know now are comfortable with. And in a way, I think that that's exactly why he published them, because because he sort of could foresee that things would get slower, more romantic. You know, there is a there is a kind of a 
a slowing down the grandness, the Wagner effect, if you will. The metronome, which Beethoven so appreciated, makes it possible to set the same tempo anytime and anywhere. Since 1895, a German company has been producing Melzer's metronomes and selling them all over the world. They are based in the well-hidden idyllic town of Izni. In Allgäu, in South Germany, there is the most famous metronome manufacturer in the whole world, Wittner Metronomes. I never thought I could get so excited about metronomes, but look at this one. Metronomes are high-tech. Before a model is sold, it has to pass an endurance stress test. Historically, it was the case that in the Baroque period they only had dancers that roughly predefined the meter. There was the Allemande, the Courante, the Sarabande, and so on. And when these dancers went out of fashion, there were no longer any meters or no concept of them. Then came the Italian tempo markings, Allegro, Adagio, and so on. But what do they really mean? There was no definition. Let's come back to Beethoven. He interpreted his Allegro differently than Salieri, for example. That means that there was a need for a binding tempo reference. Beethoven wrote that his metronome was sick. How can a metronome be sick? <laughs> you have to bear in mind the state of technology in those days. The metronome is a highly precise mechanical device. The slightest deviations in terms of dimensions, we're talking about a weight discrepancy of one or two grams, will cause a different metronome speed. We conveniently, as post-factum, so to speak, we can say, well, you know, he was deaf and his metronome was broken. And there is even some kind of a, a story somewhere in the letter where it says that his metronome was, was not functioning correctly. I mean, I think it's all nonsense. I mean, that's when was deaf, he wasn't stupid. Beethoven's insistent on exact tempos set standards. With his special feeling for rhythm, he inspired a completely different genre long after his time. It's incredible how much Beethoven has shaped our music world. Whether in jazz, film scores or rock music, his innovations and ideas are everywhere. Mm -hmm. 